Hey, this is Mike. I'm here at Conway Ford in Conway, South Carolina, and I am checking out a brand new 2016 Ford Explorer XLT. Now, Tracy that works here at Conway Ford let me know that she got it in today, and I rushed on over here to show it to you because I want you to see it as soon as I see it because it is something new. Check out the front end. It's a different style. It's rounded. The grill's different. The front's different. The fog lights. They changed quite a bit around uh, on this vehicle. It does have different wheels. And this is the XLT, which is kind of the middle of the road. Not the real high end and not real bottom end. So that way you can get an idea of what's included in that trim level. So let's go ahead and start it up. It does have the remote start. Here's the key. And you just have to make sure it's locked. And just double tap that and it starts up. All right. So you can see it does have this accent lighting, LED accent lighting around the edge right here of the headlight. So you can see it coming down the road. And it also has LED, LED low beams and halogen high beams as well as halogen uh, fog lights down there. This is the high beam here, which is the halogen, and there's the LED low beam. And you can see the contrasting color. When you put them side by side, you can see how yellow the halogen actually is and how white and clear the LED is. LEDs are definitely in the future. Then, you, of course, you can see the accent lighting around the outside. And then here in the front, we have some parking sensors. You can see those little circle things. Those are the your parking sensors. And check out that grill, that's really grabs your attention. And it has 18 inch aluminum wheels. Actually it has an aluminum spare tire. Aluminum spare the tire the, the spare tire has aluminum wheel as well. It's kind of interesting. Alright. This one has a 3.5 liter. V6 with the six speed automatic transmission. All right, so to open up this car, all I have to do, I don't even have, I can use the key. It does have the lock and unlock buttons, but I'm gonna put the key in my pocket for the rest of the video. I could just walk up, put my hand here, and it unlocks. It senses the key, which is a proximity key. It also senses, senses my hand here, and it unlocks. Uh, to relock it, I just put my finger right there and it relocks. So, real easy to lock and unlock the car with a key in your pocket. And there's some other cool stuff that you can do with the key in your pocket, too. So, here's the inside of the passenger door. Very, it has some style and functionality here. You've got this metallic, uh, I guess you can say it's like a, a textured metallic accent there that wraps around you. And then you have the pocket there with a bottle holder. Really classy looking inside door. It does have the power seat with lumbar support and adjustable lumbar support at that. This one has a tan leather seats. Super comfortable vehicle. Super comfortable seats. Here's the glove compartment. It is a kind of like a compartmentalized com glove compartment with a little shelf there, but it is all felt lined. Plenty of leg room. Now that seat's all the way back, and we'll check out the back, the second row seats. This is a third row vehicle, so let's go ahead and check out the second row. You can see the second, the back doors have the same high quality styling with the textured met metallic accent there. And there's your second row. You can see the seats all the way back in the front, but look, look you still got some decent leg room, which is a good, good thing in my book. And also you can put these seats down like so in order to access the third row and the third row of course this will also um, you, you can also lift it up by lifting like so to actually walk in there and there's the third row past the third row seats and decent leg room now they are they have some a little bit of bolstering to the seats and so they look fairly comfortable uh, the the real tall person might have a little bit of an issue but for the average 
third row passenger person, you know, usually kids and stuff, it's a really nice, nice seating area. You've got some storage pockets there with um, cup holders. And then you got speakers and cup holders there. Climate control back here, LED lighting. You do have some climate controls back here for the backs. There's a tri-zone climate control, so you've got some uh, adjustments there, plus a power supply. Plus this folds out, giving you some cup holders. Zoom in there so you can see it a little bit better. Take a look at the back. There's the fuel doors on the passenger side, and it is a capless design. So basically, you just walk up, put the nozzle in there, pump the gas, you're good to go. You just close the door, you're all set. If you ever need to use a gas can, you just have to use a little funnel that's supplied in the back of the vehicle to uh, to put the gas in. All right, so here's the back of the vehicle, and it does have the dual exhaust with the 3.5 liter to breathe, and have, you have the parking sensors. All right here's your little lens for your backup camera. So opening up this, there's a couple ways to do it. You can reach your hand and and here and push the button and open it up. You can also double tap this on the key and it will un just open up for you but you can also with the key on you you could just walk up and just kick your foot underneath it like that you don't actually have to hit the vehicle but you just put your kick your foot under it and it senses the key it senses your foot being kicked under and it opens up for you and that way if your hands are full or if you just don't feel like touching the dirty vehicle if you're on a, if it's dirty or whatever or getting the key out or you know whatever you just kick your foot opens up for you isn't that cool so here's the back storage area, and this is the floor mats. This one comes with the all-weather all floor mats, they're like a rubber mat, which is highly recommended if you don't have them. This is kind of like a secret compartment cubby in here. And you've got a light back here and power supply. But these seats are pretty interesting because they can fold down out of the way and turn into a whole cargo space. So, so like I said, the headrest is up now. I can just pull this strap, lower the headrest, and then I pull this red strap right here, and I have to push it. It's hard to do with one hand. All right, took two hands, but I got it down, so that way you can see that it has a really good storage area when you don't have to have two passengers in the back. You can actually have one passenger and some storage area. You can actually have three passengers and some storage area. You notice that second row, you can still put two people there. You could put one person here. And look, you can fit a really long box that you picked up at Lowe's or Home Depot right here. So there's a lot of, of course, you can put all these seats down and put a bigger box back here. So when you go pick up your you know, 60 inch TV or whatever, you've got the ability to do that with this vehicle it is a you can adjust the different cargo capacity versus passenger capacity basically all right and of course it you know lifts up the in the reverse order and that way you have all access to all your seats again so lowering this tailgate this hatch you can just kick your foot again like so and it lowers back down. So it goes in both ways. You can kick your foot to open it or kick your foot to lower it. All right, so. Just give you another perspective here on the back. All right, let's take a look under the hood at that 3.5 liter. 
This is how you use a remote start. It turns off when the hood's up. That's fine. Oh, they covered it up with plastic still. Man. All right, so under here, under this big plastic cover, is an engine, I promise you that. It's a 3.5 liter V6, and yeah, and it has a six-speed automatic transmission. Anyway, not much to see under here. It does have everything secure and well organized, but unfortunately they covered up the engine with a big old sheet of plastic again. To open up the hood, you just reach in and and uh, just there to the right of the Ford emblem and you just reach in there and under the latch. All right, anyway, let's go ahead and check out the inside. All right, here I am in the inside. Lots and lots of leg room, knee room. So let's start over here. And of course on the door you have your power windows for all four doors. You also have your side mirror controls. You just choose which side you want. And uh, also your door locks. Here, over here, we have your light controls. It does have automatic headlights. So right here, that's off. There's your parking lights, there's your headlights, and there's automatic mode basically and you can it, you put it there and you don't have to worry about turning your headlights on ever again or turning them off it will automatically turn them on and off for you and it's a really really good feature and so this button here is for your uh for your fog lights now the fog lights don't work when you have your high beams on so just want to let you know that and then here's your interior uh, uh interior dash lights you can make those brighter or dark or dimmer and this button right here is for your um, for your interior lights. When you push those, it, it'll turn them on and off. So you can quickly just push the button and it turns on the inside, all the inside lights. So down here is a button to open up your trunk, uh, the, the hatch there. And so that's another way you can open up the hatch. Trailer tow button, this is if you're towing something, you push that button to let the transmission know that you got something back there and you, they need to accomplish compensate for that all right so here's the steering wheel and this one's got some shiny black accent plastic around all the buttons really laid out nice and I'm gonna try to stop using the term nice because that is something that's overused by everybody <laughs> including myself so I can't complain so this fabulous steering wheel is comfortable really soft to the touch it's got the bo slight bolsters here not much there uh, and then it's got a nice it's there I go again there it has a, a dished out area here for your arm where you put your hand it's kind of like um, it's kind of compensates for your, where to put your thumb here so it doesn't dig into your hand too much uh, so I'll go ahead and get rid of that little warning there let me know it's low on gas and so your cruise control buttons are down here you just have to make sure it's on and then you can set it and then you can resume and cancel it and over here is your this is your bluetooth and your phone and your volume so your volume is for your radio and once you pair your phone with the bluetooth system you can receive calls you can hang up on calls and you can make calls using this voice recognition button so once you pair your phone is going to have access to your phone book so you push that button you say call John or whoever's in your phone book and as long as you say it like it's spelled in the phone book it will call them for you also you can push the voice recognition button to tell the navigation to go to a certain address or uh, go to a certain station on the radio things like that there's lots of different voice commands that you can use that's designed to keep your hands on the wheel and eyes on the road so I really like the voice commands the voice recognition system in vehicles I think it's a really good safety feature first and second a convenience feature that's the way I see it so now we've got these two pads here with OK and a bunch of arrows around them on right and left now this one corresponds with that blue screen there and then this one on the right corresponds to the screen on the right so in the middle you've got a speedometer 
which is really easy to see. It's prominent, easy, simple, basically. But there's more information that you can get to in this, in the dash here, besides just the speedometer. And I'll show you. And it's stuff you don't always have to, you know, look at. And of course, your gas, you have to look at that all the time. So that'll stay there. So let's go ahead and start here on the left. And I'm going to use this pad right here, and I'm going to push the left button and you can see it goes into this menu system and let me zoom in a little bit all right so there it's uh, there's the menu system I push to the right and it's showing display mode I'm gonna scroll down this gives me the R RPMs if I want to see that scroll down again I get my RPMs my engine coolant temperature and the gas gauge scrolling down again gives me my tire pressure and gas gauge and then it scrolls down to a miles per hour like a digital speedometer and then distance empty again. Now I'm going to go back to the left. I can go into my trips here, and the trips will give me the miles that I've driven, the average miles per gallon, and the time. Scrolling down again gives me my fuel economy. This is a real world and an average. Uh, so but when I say real world, real time, I'm sorry. So when you're driving, you'll see like a little meter that pops up and lets you know right in that moment what you are um, getting in that moment. And then you got your, you know, average. Um, you can keep track of basically your different averages and, and different screens there. Driver assist. This is where you can turn off your traction control or your tra trailer sway control. So this one has the ability to keep you straight if you're going around curves and the back wheel starts slipping. It has some way of using the brake control system or something to keep you straight. The computer basically does it for you. Also, the tra same thing with the trailer sway controls. It uses the the braking power of the front wheels to alternate back and forth to keep you from swaying. If you start swaying, your trailer starts swaying, and that's kind of scary if it ever actually happens. All right, so you can go, and then of course you can go into settings. You can change your all kinds of different things in here: your locks, lighting, calculation. You can also change it to kilometers per hour, that kind of stuff. All right, so I think you get the idea of what's here on the left side. That's like a whole menu system for different vehicle options. So on the right side, using this pad on the right side of the steering wheel, this one is really associated with this entertainment screen. So I'm gonna show you that. Right now, it says entertainment, navigation, and fun. And you notice as I change through this system, it changes the color because on this screen, each corner is color coordinated based on uh, what you're trying to do. So the entertainment is red, so over here it's red. So that's why it changes color. So I'm going to just go into the entertainment. This just tells you what your radio is doing or what you're, you know, what you're doing. And then once you get in here, you can scroll down and go to the different stations. These are your presets now. And you can change AM, FM, satellite radio, different ways of playing your music. Going down into navigation, uh, this is where, right now there's no navigation installed in the vehicle. It will be installed before the first customer buys it, but this is where you can actually see some, you know, some guidance controls and stuff like that. All right, and then phone, this is where you can go in and once you pair your phone, uh, this is where you can see who you're talking to, who's calling, that kind of stuff. All right, so they base, that's kind of the basics there on that screen. Also at the bottom, You'll see you have a, a time, a little clock, and also you, your compass, northwest. That's the vehicle. The vehicle's facing northwest right now. And so that's, you see, it's real simple, but you can always access more information and more information. There's there's le levels upon levels of information that you can access if you need to see it. Normally, just driving around, you can just set it and just go. You know, so like in my case, I would just set the uh, the left side to the digital speedometer and just keep driving. Alrighty, so over here we've got like a speaker there in the front center. You got your vents, which I'm trying to aim away from the camera. But here's the touch screen, and like I said, it's color coded, but it's correl it's correlated with corners. So so you can see that this corner is phone, this one's navigation, uh, this one is your climate and your entertainment. So I'm going to start with phone here. It's going to try to get me to. Search for sync on your device to and select sync where one. Found. Let me get back out, get out of that. Because I want to show you, uh, this is the screen that you would see when you're using your phone. And you have access to your phone book. 
Uh, you can do a, you get a call history, do a quick dial. So basically you have favorites. You can actually do messaging on here. Um, you know, wireless, just basically telling what to say. I think there's options that you choose uh, to respond back to certain people when they text you, like I'm, I'm driving or yes or no, that kind of stuff. And you've got a keypad, and I think you can actually see a picture of the person if they have one, if you have one in your phone. And, you know, all the, here's all the, you know, the basic controls there for your phone. So I'm going to push this little house right here in the center. This is your home button. And so now I'm back to the main screen again. So that's where I was phone. Now I'm going to go on this side, which right now I can't do because it doesn't have navigation installed. But this, this section over here is for your navigation. And it'll pop up your map and you can put in your destination and all that stuff. So it's, a, it's a full navigation system once it's installed. Entertainment, this is for your radio. But you have AM, FM, satellite radio. You also have a CD player. You have a USB port. And uh, you can play music through an SD card or your, your Bluetooth. So like right off your phone or a Bluetooth device. So there's lots and lots of different ways of playing music besides just the radio. All right, let's go back to the little house again, and let's go to climate. So now you can see the all the, all the climate controls. Really easy to read. You've got your fan speed, where you want the air to blow, your temperatures, and all that cool stuff. Also, you can save a my like your temperature. You can set everything up and you just push that, and it goes to what you want it to go to. It does have heated seat controls as well. All righty, and then this this little gear thing right to the right of the house is a full settings. This is where you change your clock settings, your sound, vehicles, all kinds of different settings um, in here. You can set your door keypad code. Um, but I'm not sure about the keypad. If you got the key and you have the ability to just touch your hand on the handle, not really seeing the purpose of the keypad. Maybe you can let me know because I don't really understand that why it has a keypad in addition to the key. Maybe if your battery goes dead, I'm not really sure. Maybe you can let me know. Anyway, there's the main features of the touchscreen. All right, so down here, there's your CD player kind of hidden in this little space here. And you can always turn your parking sensors off with this button in case it's, you're backing up to something and it's beeping at you and you know you need to get close, you can always turn them off. So your volume is here change through the stations is there eject your CD change to the CD tracks now there's some more climate control buttons down here now it is on the screen but of course not everybody likes to go into the screen they might want to have another screen up so you can control just about everything on your climate control right here and this these buttons are a little bit different you kind of push them down like that that's your volume, that's your uh, temperature you can go up and down little toggle switches and your heated seat, you can turn that on there, where you want the air to blow, your air conditioning, all that good stuff. And then it does have a dual zone uh, to where you can turn that off. So like right now, both of them are synced together. So if I adjust this one, it's gonna adjust both of them. But all I have to do is just start adjusting this one and it goes back to dual. So there's your fan speed. All right, so down here, this little compartment is pretty cool. This is where you find your USB and your SD cards and your power, power supply in there. So it has this little shelf system in here and it's pretty good for just taking your phone and putting it in there like so. And I'm not sure exactly what, what it's really designed for but that's what I would use it for. Put my phone in there, I can plug my phone into the USB port and charge it or plug it into the cigarette lighter type thing and charge it and I can close that right up and it's out of the way so that's what I would use it for I'm sure you know there's other uses but that's what came to mind when I saw that that this big door and that little shelf in there is a kind of like a rubberized shelf to where um, it keeps your cell phone kind of secure there all right so here's your cup holders of course you can put your phone in there you know it's got a space in the between so you can put even a, a note 4 in there a good size phone and you can prop it up like that so the cup holders are pretty good size and you know kind of made for for putting stuff in there besides cups it seems like so here's the shifter plus you have this little tiny round change pocket I guess I'm not really sure what this little cups for 
it's too small to be a cup holder and it's not going to hold much change so so anyways here is the shifter i'm going to put it in reverse to show you the backup camera and also it has the sonar or the radar or sonar sensors there uh to sense if there's anything behind you so if you're backing up and get close to something it'll beep at you also if you have the trailer hitch installed you when if you're backing up to a trailer you just push this little plus right here magnifying glass and it zooms in to the spot where the trailer hitch would actually hook up so you can back right up to it no problem nice clear pretty good amount of uh, visibility you can see the clouds there in the background it is a wide angle lens so it gives you a little bit of distortion around the edges so they put these guidelines there to kind of let you know about the width of your vehicle as you're backing up you can see from the bumper to the sky so it's really really uh, a good good view all right so the shifter continuing on there's neutral and there's drive and that's the just the normal drive you drive around don't have to worry about it don't have to think about it but you can go it down here all the way to sport mode and there's an S and it'll let you know the S right there in sport mode is in effect and the back of the steering wheels right here hidden you can see them easier than you can feel them but right here in here are paddle shifters and you can cycle through the six-speed transmission just like a manual transmission so I'm gonna kind of push that button on the right and you can see once I push it then the RPMs pop up here and as well as the number of the gear that I'm actually in so you see it has the number one there and then the RPMs if I push the push it it goes to two but if I keep pushing it's not gonna let me go too far out of a gear ratio so um, to avoid messing up the transmission so you do have some level of changing through the gear ratios in the six-speed automatic transmission and at any time you want to go back to drive you just bump it up there to drive and you're out of that completely and, and the vehicle will handle shifting the gears for you all right center console this lifts up and you've got a felt lined pretty decent amount of space in there you've got this little tray that pops out and you can empty it or whatever but in here you have a USB port for charging stuff and you also have a um, pretty good amount of space in there you can see it has like this little pocket deep in there but it's felt lined so it's pretty good pretty big so it's gonna get cluttered so I'm just warning you that it's gonna turn into a junk drawer so and also this tray kind of has like this deep deeper pocket I guess for putting pens or something in and it just goes back like that does have some place to put pens and stuff here as well lip balm pens cards has the actual label so that's cool all right it does have an auto dim rear view mirror you can see it's auto dimming now uh, hopefully you can see that because the light sensor is back here and this is covering it, it up so it's slightly slightly dimmed right now uh, but it will from what I understand it will get darker because it does have a a, uh, a light sensor here in the back uh, like right here in the center so if somebody's behind you with their high beams on it'll dim more but this is kind of like the default night mode right now so let's see if it'll change and take that so the light can go so yeah you can see it lightening back up yeah, cover it up again and it dims out again so it's a little bit of a, not a huge difference see, cause you, because you still have to see out uh, the mirror. It just changes it slightly so it doesn't blind you as much. It's easier on your eyes. So the visors, visors have mirrors and lights. You have a place to put some sunglasses there. Not too big Hollywood sunglasses, kind of regular normal sunglasses it looks like. And you got light reading lights. You just quickly tap those and you got a light there. Up here is your microphone for your Bluetooth system. Let's take a look back at our visibility.
All right, there you have it. 2016 Ford Explorer. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions, any comments, leave it in the description of the video. I mean, the comment section of the video, sorry. I'm going to have some information in the description of the video. So you can click on that and get some more information, including the window sticker and all that good stuff. So anyways, thanks for watching, and thank you to Conway Ford for allowing me to share this with the world. And thank you for your time. See you next time.